family, we're launching our CRC Back to School project for the year. We have two ways in which you can contribute. The first, a preschool bag that consists of a drawstring bag, jumbo wax crayons, a water bottle, and a new custom CRC coloring book for 120 Rand. The second is a primary school bag that's made locally and it contains a pencil case, blue pen, black pen, pencils, coloring book, etc. for 250 Rand. We're giving everyone the opportunity to sponsor as many children as possible. Partner with us today. Visit our website for more details. Pastor Art, we love and honor you. Thank you for being a fearless leader, always challenging us and inspiring us to be our best. On this Boss's Day, we just want to show you how much we appreciate you. We thank God for the gift you are to us. Boss Art, we just want to come today on this very special Boss's Day and we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We really appreciate what you do for us. You always lead us strong. You're the best leader that we can uh, have in the world. And we also just want to thank you that you impart to us. We thank you that you are such a blessing to us as a staff. Pastor Art, we just want to say thank you for being an awesome boss to us all and your desire to see us flourish. And we have the same desire for you. And we thank you for being the best boss ever in the world. Thank you that you've chosen each one of us we could have done anything in the world but you chose us we really want to thank you and we love you and we appreciate you pastor Art. and therefore we say happy boss day pastor Art. happy boss Did you know that many of the songs that we praise and worship to during Dream Week were written and produced by CRC Music? That's not all. CRC Music continues to make big waves online. This year alone, we managed to receive over 1.7 million streams on Spotify and Apple Music. And CRC Music YouTube videos received over 900,000 views. The songs CRC Music writes and produces continue to make Jesus more famous as we witness thousands from around the world who listen and worship with us. Join in, listen to CRC Music songs on all major streaming platforms. Do you want to grow closer in your relationship with God? Then join our Term 4 Bible School every Tuesday night, starting at 7 p.m from the 17th of October. It's hosted online, so anyone can join from anywhere. Sign up now by visiting our website, crcchurch.com.
Welcome to this live broadcast at CRC. Get ready, be expectant for what God is going to do today. Absolutely, Ange. Right now, we're going to hand over to the band for praise and worship. Are you ready to praise and worship the Lord? Come on, let's do it. Hey Amen. are you ready to praise and worship the Lord? Make some noise in this place. Give it some praise. Here we go. The table's defeated, he's under our feet. 
So I am 
Jesus, 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 hallelujah. In this place, he's worthy, 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 worthy. Make some noise for Jesus. He's holy. Come on, he's so worthy in this place. Oh, yes, you holy God. We just worship you, Father. Thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all have gone before us, and all who will be to sing the song of ages. Come on, just lift him up. Your name. He's the highest, your name is the greatest, your name who oh, stands above and more, above all thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name.
Your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. Let your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name of all Come on, be exalted. Be exalted now. In
Come on, let's lift our hands to our King tonight. Come on, let's exalt Him on this beautiful Sunday night in South Africa. Come on, on television. Come on, sing it one more time. Be exalted. Come on, he's the name above all names. Let's praise him tonight. Come on, you're in the house of God. Not in front of your television, except if you're watching Christian TV tonight. Come on, make a joyful shout unto God. Come on, tonight's going to be a great night because you've come to meet with God and God's not going to disappoint you. God's going to touch you. God's going to challenge you. He's going to lift you and He's going to bless you tonight. Do you believe it tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome tonight, all the beautiful people all over South Africa and the nations of the world. What a great honor to bring God's word to you every single week in Russia, Israel, America, Europe, Iran. India, Pakistan, China, and all over Africa, our brothers from Africa. And then, of course, Faith TV. What an honor to be with you, Dr. Andre and Jenny. Great privilege to be live on this channel. Also, Praise TV, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, CRC Online. And then, of course, all our wonderful Christian Revival churches with us all over South Africa and all over Botswana and Namibia and other places of Africa and soon there will be a CRC just up the road. Amen. Say amen. Come on, man. God is good. God loves you. God is on your side. You have reason to have a smile on your dial. To hell with the devil. God's on the throne. The devil is under your feet and the church of Jesus is marching on. No matter how great the darkness out there, the light in us is greater than the darkness. No matter the chaos, and the confusion that is raging in the world, we know our future is secure, our hope is in God, our feet are grounded on the rock, on solid ground, and we know we have the victory because of Jesus Christ our Lord. Say Amen tonight. We are not shaken by the things in the world. People may be shaken, but the church of Jesus cannot be shaken. This is our time. The greater the darkness, the greater the light. When the enemy comes in, God said, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against Him. Listen, the nations of the world are groaning and travailing, waiting. The greatest move of God is about to break out in Jesus' name, right here in South Africa. Like Reinhard Bonke used to say, great evangelist, he said, from Kai Cape Town to Cairo, the gospel of Jesus will be preached. And I'll tell you, going beyond Cairo into the Middle East and the nations of the earth, this is our time for the greatest revival in Jesus' name. There's a lot of conflict out there, but we are not shaken by the conflict because we see opportunity right in the midst of darkness. Say amen. Give somebody a high five and say you're looking good. You're looking great. You are blessed. You are highly favored. Your future is bright in Jesus' name. Good to see so many of you here tonight. Um, uh, uh, praise God. Um, uh, I said to somebody, well, I'm going to watch the rugby, but um, I don't think Evan will remember the scoreboard. The only thing that matters is what we do for God's kingdom. Amen. So, uh, y'all yeah, feel bad, everybody sitting at home watching rugby. I hope you feel very, very bad. Uh, and I hope you don't regret being here tonight and, and you're thinking about the rugby. So, uh, you're not going to watch the score. England, Fiji, you want to know what the score is? Let me, uh, I think 22-10. Is it? Huh. Where did I get that word from? Okay. I don't know. I've got, I've got one of those in-ear microphones, you know. Uh, nah, I'm just playing. My message tonight to encourage you and to prepare you. This year of acceleration is not done. But we are preparing for the promise of God for next year, and that is the year of overflow. Supernatural acceleration into overflow. John 10, 10, Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Life in overflow. And if you weren't here this morning, get the message, because when we talk about overflow, we are not talking about money. 
We are talking about an overflow of God's presence, God's anointing, God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, God's purpose in our lives, and the money will follow. Somebody shout overflow. So uh, you are the generation that will change this world. Listen, I never thought I'd see everything happening the way it's happening right now. And I have to believe that God has positioned the right generation for this time. And that's you. Everybody under the age of... <laughs> of what? Ah, uh, 85. Okay. Oh, let's not go with 85. But no. Uh, um, let's go with Jean... Uh, Jean who? Jean... Z, X, Y, Z. Well, you might just be the final generation, who knows, before the return of Jesus. Ephesians 3 verse 20, the Bible says, Now to Him, that's God, who is able, say tonight, let's start, let's go. Say, God is able to do exceedingly, say it, abundantly, above all I can ask or think, according to the power that works within me. God is able to do, not just above, not slightly above, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. That's the amazing thing about God. God is not a God who holds out on you. God's not a God who blesses you sparsely. God is not a God who doesn't uh, uh, want the best in your life. He's a God who sent His very best and He announces. I mean, overflow was announced 2,000 years ago when God gave His best, when God made a statement and God gave Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sin, to redeem you from the curse of the law and to put you back in a relationship with God. You talk about overflow, my brother. That means you have access into the presence of God tonight because of God's generosity. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And that is our assignment. That is our mission to take the gospel, the message of the gospel to every man, woman and child in our world. Come on, we're going to talk about that next week. So you need to get ready to go to over and above. You need to get ready to go from your almost to your utmost. Not slightly short. Not missing the mark. God wants to bring you into overflow in every area of your life. Say amen tonight. So He is the God of more when life gives you less. So when you are facing a challenge, you better get ready for God to show up and for God to rearrange things and change things in your life. He's not the one holding out on you. He's the God of the overflow. He is El Shaddai. He's more than enough. He's the almighty God. He's the omnipotent God. He's the God with whom all things are possible. The Bible says things impossible with men are possible with God. And I'll tell you again tonight, Malachi 3 verse 6, the Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews uh, 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. When God came to Abraham, God said to him, I am the Almighty God. Not I was the Almighty God, not I will be the Almighty God. When God went to Moses, God said, you go tell that Pharaoh, I am that I am. I am the great I am. I am the God who is the same yesterday, today and forever. I am a God of the breakthrough. I am a God who makes a way. I'm a God who delivers you. I'm a God who restores you. Come on. He is the great I am. Omnipotent, all powerful, all knowing and He is for you tonight. So you better have hope no matter what you are facing. I said to you this morning, the greatest image you can have is the image of God. Because your personal view of God will profoundly affect every area of your life. How you view God, how you see God will determine how you pray, what you expect. You believe God is punishing you, you will not have confidence toward God. You have to see God for who He is. He said, I am. Not I was. Not I will be. I am loving, merciful, kind, righteous. I am the great I am. That great I am. Come on, South Africa. I am the God who holds your future. 
in the palm of my hand. I am the God who promises to deliver you. I am the God who promises to make all things new. I am the God who will make a way where there seems to be no way. I am the God who will restore. I am the God who will keep you. I am the God who will prosper you. Come on, in Jesus' name. I am the God who will heal you. I am that great I am. So we cannot allow what we face in life to change our perception of God. We cannot listen to the opinions of people. We cannot allow what is happening in the world, the turmoil in the world, to taint the image we have of God. We cannot allow our personal pain, our past, to change the integrity of God's character. In James chapter 1 verse 17, the Bible says, Every good and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. Look at the person next to you and say, God never changes. Say it. Say it. Say to the person on the other side, you may change, but God doesn't change. So let's talk about getting ready for overflow. And my message tonight is while she poured. Uh, there's a lot of people that are waiting for God to move and they're stagnant. So we want to talk about positioning ourselves to experience the overflow that God has for us in every area of our lives, right? John 10, 10, again, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. I, Jesus said, have come that you may have life zoe and life more abundantly. We shouldn't settle for anything less. It doesn't matter the delay. Abraham, 25 years. Joseph, 17 years. It doesn't matter the delay. The delay is not the denial. You have to stay true to the promise of God in your life and stay diligent in your pursuit of what God promised for you. So let's talk about a woman in the Bible, a widow woman who lost her only source of income and she's in a bad place. And let's see how God takes her from poverty into a life of overflow to go through that season, through that valley. So 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. Now, men have to provide, amen. Now don't be silent. Don't marry a lazy bum. Um, free advice. If you date, you ask the brother, what are you going to do with your life? The next question you ask, how many jobs have you had in the last year? Okay, let's not go there. Because people sit around and wait. I, I, I'm going to show you tonight that you have to position yourself. You have to do the insignificant, the little. Because God moves with movers. He doesn't sit with sitters. He walks with walkers. He runs with runners. So while you talk about what you plan to do and never do it, nothing is going to change in your life. So you have to go get that degree. You have to apply for that job. You have to be better than anybody else and everybody else. You have to work expecting God's favor upon your life. You have to dig that well and God's going to fill it. You have to make the ditch and God's going to send the Holy Ghost and fill it with water. You have to do the possible so God can do the impossible. Not sit and wait for better days. So yes, a woman... She's in a desperate situation and she knows where she's to go. She goes to church. And she says, she states her case. Because she wants a God intervention. She's not settling for what she has. She's desperate like the woman with the issue of blood. Although the law prohibited her, from entering city limits, she was not going to accept the status quo. She heard about Jesus. And what happens when you hear about Jesus? Faith comes into your heart. 
Hope comes into your heart. You know that things can change. You know things can be better. If you only touch the hem of his garment, oh, come on. I'm not talking about some historical figure. I'm talking about the living God. She said to herself, if I may only touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. My brother and my sister, you have to get rid of your cynical attitude. You have to get rid of your doubt. You have to stop listening to the naysayers and you have to make up your mind that you will pursue Jesus Christ and all that he has for you. Come on, say a good amen there in Cape Town. We're not going to wait for the fish to jump in the boat. We are going to go fishing. We're not going to wait for church buildings just to rise. We're going to build them church buildings. We're not going to wait for businesses to grow. We are going to grow our businesses. We're not going to wait for breakthrough. We are going to be the breakthrough that God called us to be in somebody else's life. Come on, man. Say amen in Jesus' name. So she's not going to accept the status quo, and neither should you. You should not allow tragedy to have the final say. You should not allow betrayal, disappointment to have the final say. You have to get up. Get yourself in the presence of God. Get yourself back in the Word of God and find a solution for the future that God has for you. So she says, my servant, your servant, my husband is dead. That's a fact. The business died. COVID dealt me a severe blow. I've lost this. I've lost that. But thank God you will recover. I said, thank God you will recover. You will recover all God's way. Oh, come on, man. You are not done. Because God's going to turn your impossibility into a possibility so that you will say it is done. The things that was impossible, God has done for the glory of His name in Jesus' name. Gone with a passivity. Gone with a waiting game in Jesus' name. So she runs to God. And she says, he has the fact. I'm, I'm about to lose my house. I'm about to lose my possessions. Not only that, the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. How many of you know that's a bad situation? Mama's boys are going to work off her debt. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? In today's terms, it would be, how can I help you? He's not insulting her. He wants to help her. As God wants to help you. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do against me? So she comes to help. And the prophet responds not holding back, holding out. He says, how can I help you? He says, what's up? She's told the story. Then he, then, she's, then he says, how can I help you? Listen, I don't know what you are facing, but I know that God wants to help you. I don't know how God's going to help you, but I know God is going to help you. And I know God is going to make a way. And I know that God's going to send a word. If you will raise your level of expectation, then God is going to fill your mind with His wisdom. And as you respond to the word of God, you are going to see God's breakthrough and God's release. So He says, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have? I mean, when you're in a bad situation, you think you've got nothing, right? Because that's what Satan tells you. You go through a tragic divorce or something, or or you go through a broken relationship. The devil says, nobody wants you. Oh, listen, there's a lot of fish in the sea. And some sharks as well, okay. So, um, there's somebody that will love you. Somebody that will restore you. Somebody that God is going to use. You're not going to give up on yourself because of some bad experience. You are going to live again. You are going to breathe again. You are going to feel God's restoration in your life. Come on. Those dead emotions are going to come alive. Those numb emotions are going to come alive. Those feelings of uselessness are going to change in the name of Jesus because God is going to change you. Listen, God designed you. God made you exactly who you are. Stop undermining yourself. Stop demeaning yourself. Stop putting yourself down. Stop that negative record in your head that says, I'm a nobody, I'm a nobody, I'm a nobody. Hey, I'm here to tell you tonight, young person, you're a somebody and you have to wake up and rise up and be the mighty man, the mighty woman that God called you to be or you are going to stay exactly in the same place in Jesus' name. Say amen. Come on. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. You've been in that hole too long. So he says, what shall I do for you? What do you have in your house? Sometimes... We are a square peg in a round hole. And what we are doing is not working because we're not working with God's grace. 
So we're trying and trying and trying and it's not working. Listen, you will succeed where God has graced you. You will be blessed where God has favored you. You will excel where God, what, in what God has designed you for. So sometimes if things are not working, you have to step back. And not go through this trauma and self-analysis of I'm useless. You have to step back and you have to say, God, what I'm doing is not working. Help me. And then God says, what do you have? Listen, if you do know who you are, you'll never know what you can do. You have to discover your divine I am. I am by the grace of God before you will ever fulfill your I must or I can. You have to know who you are. And in our world today, people are sitting with a massive identity crisis. They try to do what other people do. You cannot. You are designed to be you. You be you. You stop criticizing yourself and pushing your nose this way and your ear that way and look at yourself and say, if I had her brains, if I had his looks, or if I looked like this person, I'd be a success. If I was black, if I was white, no. You are perfect. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are exactly who God created you to be. And if you will celebrate yourself, you will see the plan and the purpose of God will unfold in your life. Come on, man. I'm talking to God-created people. I'm talking to people created in the image of God. I'm talking to people that hail from God. You are born from God. So you are not a failure. You are not a no good. You are not a dropout. You are not a washout. Maybe what you are doing is not working. But you have to take a step back and look into the mirror of Christ and say, Lord, who did, did you make me to be? And then accept yourself for who God made you to be and celebrate yourself something we cannot do as South Africans. Because if you go up, the crab in the bucket wants to pull you down. And most people grow up in life hearing who they are not. So, who are you? That's a key. Because God wants to deliver a blesser, because God created no human being for failure. We can fail, but we do not stay in a state of failure. God created you to get out of your tragedy. She lost her source of income, lost his source of identity, and now he's just wandering through life desperately. Desperate enough to say, Lord, I need help. Because until you don't cry out for help, help is not going to come. If you blame everybody else and make yourself a victim, there's no hope for you. This woman wasn't a victim. She said, my husband died. The source of my income died. I'm desperate. My, I'm going to lose my job. I'm losing my future. I'm losing my bloodline. And the prophet says, what do you have in your house? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The key to your multiplication, the key to your increase, the key to your blessing is in you. Because in Him we live and move and have our being. If you are connected in who God created you to be, then life is easy. Because Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Listen, sometimes we overlook the little things that make us different from everybody else and we want to be somebody else. We want to try what somebody else has tried. This was not the recipe. Elijah had a word for her. He had a now word for her. And I'm telling you that God has a now word for you to move into overflow. No longer almost, 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 almost. No longer average. No longer not feeling good enough. No longer never reaching your goals, but stepping into the go. Oh, come on, man. Stepping into the grace of God and experience the freedom that comes in Christ. So you can be that eagle that soars in the sky and you do everything God calls you to do. Shout amen. Jump to your feet and give the Lord a praise. Come on. A, a, a free word of advice here tonight. If what you are doing is not working, check your position. Don't let pride stop you from repositioning yourself into God's grace. Because God can only bless what God has given you. First, you accept what God gave you. Then you give God back. So before we get into putting what you have into the hands of Jesus, you first have to know what you have received. What is significant about you? What is your design? 
because your design determines your designation. And if you work outside of your grace, you will live frustrated every day of your life and you will never accelerate into what God has for you and that is God's overflow. You know, um, talk about sales, being a salesman. Not everybody is a salesman, but most people today when they lose their job, they want to go sell something. Hey girl, you don't have the personality. You are not wired to be a salesperson. That's why you're not selling anything. And shut me down now. <laughs> we want overflow. Overflow. Overflow is tapping into who you are. Tapping into what God has given you. He gave you gifts. He gave you talents. He gave you abilities. He gave you grace. That's why He says, tell me what do you have? If you're going to experience overflow in your marriage, overflow in relationships, overflow in the ministry. You cannot be called to be a teacher and you're trying to preach like Reinhard Bonker. You cannot be an imitator of Art Boss of Behind the Pulpit. You have to walk in your own DNA. You have to be authentic in the grace that is upon your life. Because God blesses what God gave you. But the question tonight is, if this is all we do tonight, is tell me, what do you have in your house because sometimes parents impose their desires on children and that child goes through identity crisis all the days of their life so i was very 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 cautious to tell my children ministry i was very cautious especially with david to tell him the call of god is upon his life i wanted him to discover himself first not discover his earthly daddy's plan for his life because my word will not keep him the Father's Word will keep him. And listen, if you doubt yourself, you are not going to accomplish anything. You may have moments of success, but you can see people that are graced and people who tap in to what they have. A Roger Federer, a Nadal, a Messi. Not a mess up. Amen. They're just natural. They're talented. They're gifted. So we can come and say, God bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. But God says, that's not where my blessing is. That's not what I created you for. That's not your design. Because what I've designed you for is blessed already. You have to hook up with who I created you to be. Therefore, you have to discover yourself. That's what Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. So tell me tonight, girl, tell me tonight, young man, what is in your house? What do you have that nobody else has? What is it that makes you special? What is it that defines you? What is it that flicks your switch? What is it that makes you come alive in the name of Jesus? That is the grace of God that is upon your life. And that's what God is going to accelerate. That's what God, oh, come on, man. That's what God is going to use to propel you into your future in the name of Jesus. Because God blesses what he created you to be. So when we talk about identity in Christ, we talk about a rediscovery of who we are in Christ, right? Not just I'm a new creature. Who is this new creature in Christ? I mean, you talk to some people, they're just wired. Intellectually, they're just like... And other people are wired differently. So if you don't like people, you're not going to be a good pastor. Rocket science. If you don't like people, you're not going to be a good salesperson. That's why I told you, you don't work for money. <laughs> money is a result of, 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 of you being you in Christ. You don't follow money because people follow money and lose themselves. Oh. You know, when, 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 when we were at university, people studied law, not because they loved law, but they wanted to make money. Or I want to be a doctor, not because I'm called as a doctor, because doctors made money in those days. Well, maybe now they make more, I don't know. The motive was never, this is who I am. And your blessing and your overflow, talk about not money, because when we talk about overflow, and I want to make this clear, everybody thinks money. Money is the least. You can have money and, and, have, and be unhappy. The whole world is filled with it, right? But when you're in who God created you to be, you can go to sleep at night. You can have joy. You can have peace. You can have rest. You are happy. 
You are called to reach the underprivileged children. That's your past. That makes you come alive. That energizes you because you know who you are. Some people can just, not just, I, I don't mean to minimize it. They can sit in an office eight hours a day, ten hours a day and do accounting. Respect for those people. Another lady stands on her feet all day and cuts hair and listens to every woman's gossip. Respect to her if she does or doesn't gossip with them. So what is your design? What do you have in your house? Because if we talk about overflow, overflow is not coming your way outside of you. Oh, this is deep. This is really deep, actually. Because we want the superficial. God says, no, 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 take a step back. Tell me what do you have. Because what you've done is not working. You're trying and trying and trying and trying and trying. It's not working. Take a step back and tell me. Let's have a conversation. What do you have? Uh, uh, what do you have? I, I don't have anything. It's, 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 it's the conversation the average South African will have. Not black and white, black or white, all of us. Because in the Afrikaans culture, African culture, we were taught, kinders word gesien en nie And everybody told you all your life who you were not. So, so the greatest journey is to discover who you are. You're not as bright as this one. You're not as smart as this one. You're not as talented. Who asked you? And if your parents never told you because they were ignorant, you can discover yourself in the presence of God. You can discover yourself in the mirror of God's image then you're going to find overflow. I want to make this clear because we're not going to put overflow in a compartment of, 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 of money. We're going to put overflow exactly where it is. Your relationship with God. Because you want joy, right? You want peace, right? You want to live a righteous life, right? You want to sleep at night, right? You want to feel fulfilled, right? You want a sense of accomplishment, right? You want to experience God's overflow. You, oh, come on, man. You want to enjoy life. That's what Jesus said. I've come that you may have life. Actually, he said, I've come that you may enjoy life. Not every day I've got to bear this burden of work. No. Work is a blessing. It's not a curse. God designed you to excel in life. God called you to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. So you better learn to become comfortable in your skin and stop comparing yourself to others and competing with everybody else and stop thinking there's something lacking in your life and begin to celebrate yourself and look in the mirror in the morning and say, morning gorgeous, morning beautiful. You are beautiful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knows very well. You're not going to insult God by telling God, I don't have what it takes. God says, you have more than it takes. You can, whatever I designed you to do, you are going to accelerate because that is my grace in your life and my favor in your life when you celebrate who I created you to be. Coming from an Afrikaans culture, I saw how many boys forced by their parents to play rugby and they hated rugby. And every week the dad would take them to the rugby practice and force them and shout at them because the dad never fulfilled his dream. Now he wants to live his dream through his child. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Don't raise your hand. Nobody in our family ever got a this or a this or this, so you be the first one. Maybe God called you for something else. Take that pressure off. And love yourself. If you don't know yourself, you will not know. Listen, I'm not even at my point one. If you don't love yourself, you can't love life. If you don't know who you are, you'll never know what you can do. That's why this is a profound question. What do you have in your house? Don't tell me what you're not called for. Don't tell me what you're not designed for. Tell me who you are. Come on, God's got great plans for your life. You're not an accident. You were planned by God, predestined by God. Come on, let God help you to live the greater life in Jesus' name. Come on, bless our TV audience. Come on. It's like sometimes we celebrate people that do a certain thing and we don't celebrate the rest. And we think this is great. So everybody wants that. No. What do you have? I've got three children. They're all distinctly different. All of them. 
I talk to them different. I love them the same, but I see their gifts totally different. Okay, I've got sex. Want ek sien my seens uh, gezicht te drop nou so. Ek ek Afrikaans het so gesê, maar nou nie uh, uh, aanstoot neem nie. Ek praat nie met julle nie. Uh, my pa het altyd gesê, as jy dom is, dan sikkel jy en as jy sikkel is jy dom. Hoekom sikkel jy? Ja nie jammer sikkel. Sikkel, sikkel, sikkel dier die lewe. Hoekom sikkel jy? Ek sê vir jy sê hoekom, want jy het identiteitskrisis. Wat jou werk, praat die heren van in die Afrikaans, is een mooi woord, die deugde van jou hart. Dis jou, dis, dis, nie jou liefde nie, in die Bible calls in die klies, is die joy, die Afrikaans het die deugde. Dit is, dis, waar jou leven oor gaan. Nee, God is die, God is the center of your life, but your job, determines everything in your life. Your happiness, your disposition, your peace, your provision, your home life, Everything. You're not happy there and flourishing there. It's going to filter through every area of your life. So I'm not saying when you go through storms, etc., you should not stand your ground if you know that's what God called you for. But you're not yet to mark time and do anything just to earn money. We start there. Whatever your hand finds to do, do with all your might so that we can get to our designated place in life so that means if God called you to be a doctor you will go be a waiter you'll be a waitress you will not say there's nobody that's going to pay my studies you are going to pay the price because you know this is what I was designed to do this is what I was called to do so that I can experience God's overflow in for the rest of my life is this helping somebody out tonight so I can experience God's overflow overflow throughout my late 20s you say, why not through my early 20s? Because in your early 20s, you are discovering yourself and you have to sacrifice and you have to be willing to do anything so that you can get to the place where God called you to be. You need to know yourself, discover yourself, not be an imitator of anybody else. Learn from people, but know who you are. And you will discover that in God and God alone. Not in your wife, but in God. So tell me, you're sitting in a place of lack, you, 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 lack of joy, peace. What is in your house? In the ministry especially, it's a challenge because everybody wants to be a senior pastor. Not everybody's called to be a senior pastor. I've seen people lose their destiny. I had a man walk into my office once and I, great man that I loved, I preached a lot. And then one day he said to me, uh, I'll only be happy if I'm you. I said, you can't be me. I'm me. He said, no, I'm, until, I don't, until I don't do what you do, I'll never be happy. I said, but you'll never do what I do. Because God doesn't need two ABs. I mean, one of me is enough. Amen. Will you agree to that at least, right? God doesn't need two. And he left the ministry and started a church which never worked. Because it wasn't his grace. It wasn't his design. Because he stood on this platform and preached and his head got swelled and big. And he thought, I can do this. No, you can do what God designed you to do. You can do what God called you to do. You may be working for a boss and you're earning a massive salary. And you say, well, I can also run a company. Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Because if you're not designed for it, graced for it, it ain't working. It's not flying, baby. Because God doesn't bless what you want. He blesses what He created you for. He blesses what He created you with. He blesses what He placed in you. That's why God doesn't need anybody's permission to bless you. Oh man, when you discover who you are in Christ... The sky becomes the limit. You become unstoppable. You are that eagle that will soar when everybody else is faltering and flapping around like turkeys because you are in your sweet spot. Come on. Even in the storm, you will find the eye of the storm. You will have peace 
and you will soar higher and higher and higher and higher because that's who God created you to be. God never created any one of His children to be inferior, to be a second-rate citizen. God created you to be the head, to be the tail, to live overflow in every area of your life. But you have to answer the question, who are you? So in the, in the ministry I work, uh, yeah, it's like people say, I'm not called to, I want to ask you, I didn't ask you, you, are you called to do what I'm doing, or Lewin is doing in Poch, or Keegan is doing, what are you called to do? Who are you? Because anything outside of that is going to bring unnatural pressure upon you, and it's going to stop you from overflow. Right? Men will know what I talk about. I'm not a woman, so I can't speak for women. But accomplishment in life gives you a sense of significance. Let it sink in. So when you do not accomplish things, you feel insignificant. Now, that's why you're so quiet, because you know what I'm saying is real. And the harder you try, the less it's working. Because you're outside of your design. You went through a class in university, and it was like, and I know we're in Christ and all these kind of things. Please, don't, I don't minimize that. But listen, you can be in Christ and have no job. You're not going to feel good about yourself. Ask any person that's standing and begging next to the road. They don't feel good about themselves. Yes, they're in Christ. They're new creatures, but they don't feel good. Let's just talk and say it as it is. You work your hardest, 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 trying your best. It's not working. Maybe you are the square peg in the round hole. And what is stopping you from having an honest conversation with God? Maybe you started a course. Actually, all my kids did exception, Angelique. She was going to go into social work and studied. And she's not in that. Because most people end up doing what they never studied. Because of peer pressure. They had to go to class or what call it. They did a test on you and they said, you are designed for this. And you thought, yuck. Like that rabbit goes to swimming class and says, you swim, rabbit, swim. And the rabbit panics and says, but I wasn't created to swim. I'm created to jump. I'm created to hop. And society says, no, if you want to get ahead in life, you better go for swimming classes. You better go for remedial classes. You better improve yourself. And you better learn to swim. I don't like to swim. I am not a swimmer. I'm a hopper. I'm a runner. Shout amen in Jesus' name. So if there's one thing about you, one thing, and you discover that one thing in God, you are going to discover the grace of God and you are going to discover the power of God and you are going to soar into the destiny that God has for you when you become comfortable in your skin. So I'm asking you tonight, parents, don't tell your children who they are. Celebrate them. Celebrate their talents. But to help them to discover who they are in Christ Jesus. Help them to find themselves in Christ Jesus so that they can come to you and say, Mommy, I love this. Mommy, this is what I like to do. You watch people, the temperaments people have. You thought we were going to talk about an overflow of money. No, we're talking about an overflow of joy and peace. And that starts in answering the one single question. Tell me what do you have in your house? Teaching comes natural and now you want to do something else. A love for sport is natural. You want to do something else. You are wired a certain way and you think um, it, it doesn't make enough money. Money is not the issue. Everybody please say this tonight. Say money is never an issue. Say it. Say it. Say it as if you believe it. Everybody say money is never an issue. Say it. Say. Say I don't work for money. Say it. No, say it again. Say, I don't work for a salary. Say it. Say it till you believe it. Say, I don't work for money. Say it. Say this tonight. Say, money is not my God. If, 
if you do what you do well, people will seek you out. If you become who you are, authentic, people will find you out. Because God's grace will be there, God's glory will be. It may be something this small, but my brother, when God touches it, when God blesses it, God's going to accelerate it. It may be a little idea to make a cup of coffee, but God's going to give you a recipe. And that coffee is going to be the best tasting coffee in Pretoria or South Africa. And when you see again, you sell 10 cups of coffee, then you have one shop, coffee shop, then you have a franchise because you love coffee. You are a coffee drinker. You are a coffee addict. You're a coffeeholic, whatever you are. You love doing what you are doing. You want God's overflow. You better fall in love with yourself. Fall in love with what God created you to be so that you can fall in love with life. I mean, I love preaching, I have to tell you. It's not the only thing I do, by the way. There's a lot of things I, don't, I do that I don't want to do. But I have to do it so that I can preach. But if everything you do is not working, and it's like there's a handbrake on in your life, have a conversation with God. And be big enough to ask God to show you what He put in you before you were born. Jeremiah, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That's where God's favor is. That's where God's stamp of approval is. That's where God's blessing is. That's where God's grace is. Do you want overflow? That's where you have to start. Tell me. What do you have? And then what do we do? Gideon, I'm the least. I'm the weakest. I don't have. What do we do? What this woman starts? She says, I don't have anything. But. And it's the but. But. It's the thing you overlook, trying to be a copycat, trying to please somebody else that causes you to get lost in this journey, which should be a journey of joy and life. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. What you are doing should not wear you out. It should come natural. Therefore, you have to discover Oh, come on, man. Listen, you have to discover who God created you to be. You have to be real. It's like people will preach and say everybody is a leader. Not so. Leaders are born. We all have leadership in us, can be developed, but some people are natural born leaders. When they were in the world, they were the leader of the pack, of the gang. It's just how they were designed. You can't imitate them if that's not your design. And what your, des your design is not inferior. Right? Imagine cuts off on the wing tonight. It's going to be a disaster. But then Aaron, sir, Lucet prop, it's going to be a double disaster. Right? We all know when everybody's in their sweet spot, things happen. In the church, it's the same. But somehow we think we all have it, and we have it all, and everybody has the same. And the brilliance of God is that we're not the same. They are very little the same. And that is unique and important for you to find yourself. This is who I am. Not I am separate from everybody else, but I have a purpose. And your purpose may not be somebody else's purpose. May not be your sister's purpose. Your, bro your, your father started the business. Now he wants everybody in the same business. Maybe it's not your design. Maybe your daddy's a farmer and everybody has to be farmers and you hate farming. It's okay. Have an honest conversation and say for your papa, moet my asjeblief nie uit die wil uitskryf nie, maar God het een ander plan vir my leven in Jesus naam. Kom aan man, God het ons individue gemaakt, God het ons geniek gemaakt, en jy moet jouself ontdek in, 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 in die genade van die Heere Jesus Christus, so dat jy alles kan wees, en meer kan wees, waarvoor God jou bestem het in Jesus. It's not daddy did this, I'm going to do that. No. God chose you at this time. God appointed you. And the famine you are experiencing, I really do believe the key to getting out of that famine 
is to backtrack and not allow pride and stubbornness and other conversations to pollute your mind. You have an honest conversation with God as Abram had. And he said, 13 years of silence, right, Abram? Abram, Sarah, helping God with Hagar. And Ishmael is born, plan B. It's not working. <laughs> I was mad with him. He says, okay, do your thing. We'll have a conversation when you've had enough of doing your own thing. Now let's talk. 13 years later, Abram is ready for that conversation. God says, no, I never told you to have a Sarah, to, to go to, 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 to Hagar. That was your wife's plan. My liefie, thank you. You don't have to go up to Come, my liefie. My liefie, my liefie. My liefie, my liefie, my liefie. My liefie. My liefie. My liefie. Wake Satan. Nee, ek speel so maar. My liefie dink jy nie. Nee, ek dink beslis nie. My liefie, ek wil redder kaap toe trek. My ma bly nie kaap. Ek wil definitief nie kaap toe gaan waar jou ma is nie. En dan Neil sê, dag na dag, En die man vervreed is onhalwe, trek kaap, toen as sy skoon ma. Nou kom skuif, sê die mebels rond. When my kids got married, I, I, I told them, I butt out. They still phone me sometimes for um, advice. Then I say, what did your husband say? Oh, Daddy, but I want to know what you say. I said, no, 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 I'm not married to you. I'm not thy husband. I raised thee to be a wife. They said to thy husband. Daddy, what do you think? Actually, you don't want to, you don't want to know what I think. <laughs> but uh, you two figure it out. And after 13 years, <laughs> I will tell you. <laughs> after you've struggled and fretted and sweated and made your own plans and, and, and didn't listen to the Holy God, uh, didn't listen, not you two now, and, and, and just went your way. Um, I'm just standing and I'm saying, okay. One day. Hopefully that day is sooner than later. You have a conversation with God. For every past in CRC, I see how we make these mistakes in the ministry. People feel insignificant because they don't build a building like this. What's that got to do with anything? That's God's grace. No man gets glory for doing anything. And then people burn out. People, people collapse trying to find significance. Then the question has to be asked, where is your significance? In Christ, but more than that. In who God called you to be in Christ. Because if you're comfortable in your skin, you don't feel threatened by other people. You don't feel I lose myself when I'm around somebody else. I have to tell people all the time. Uh, people say, I don't want to be in the shadow of somebody else. What does that even mean? Because if you are a tree planted, the sun is moving and the shadow is shifting and it's impossible for you to be in somebody else's shadow all the time. I suggest, my dear friend, you have a serious identity crisis. That's your problem. Because everybody has their moment to shine as they stay focused on the sun, right? There's not one tree that overshadows another tree. Certain times. So tonight when you watch the rugby, then uh, some people will have the ball and hopefully not drop it and it will be their time to shine. And then somebody else will have the ball and it will be their time to shine. Well, your time has come to shine. I announce it, I proclaim it, I prophesy and I ask you to get yourself in the presence of God and begin to love yourself 
and love who God created you to be and stop comparing yourself with everybody else and stop trying to be somebody else and just say thank you Father for making me me thank you Father for loving me as I am I am complete I am perfect I am fearfully and wonderfully made come on lift your hands tonight and say it and celebrate who God created you to be and stop 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 Try to be somebody else and be who God created you to be. You be you. Me be me. You be who God created you to be. Me be who God created me to be. And together we will bring glory to God. Every woman, every man, every child being everything that God created them to be. So again, I have to ask you, tell me what is in your house? What is in your house? What is it in you that you know makes you tick? Sit down and I have to close. Um, in, 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 in trying to be somebody else, you lose yourself and you become numb and you become a survivor. And God calls you to be a thriver. That means overflow. Jesus knew he's divine I am. He knew he's divine I must. So people always look for blessing outside. God says, no, tell me what's in your house. Tell me what you have. And how do you know? Go back to your childhood. Not the tragedy of your childhood, but go trace yourself. What are the moments? It's like people have highlights, right? And they, you know, I meet some people and they still talk about dan is hulle vijftig en praat hulle nog van toe ek vir die universiteit raak by gespeel. Luister man, daar is 30 jaar terug, asseblief. Kom ons praat oor vandag. Amen. Jy lewe nie in jou gister nie. Jy lewe in jou nou. And if your now is not a now of fulfillment and happiness, you have to take a step back. Because if you don't have peace in yourself, and you will not have peace outside of yourself. In Him, yes. But in who He made you to be. That restlessness, that doubt that has suddenly entered, that insecurity. God never created you with insecurities. God never created you incomplete. Never. That's the messages of this world and people that have tried to form you into what God's not created you to be. So yes, in Christ you are complete, but in Christ you have a purpose. In Christ you are a person, an individual, unique. So we have to go back to our maker and say, Lord, who am I? Who did you create me to be? And then God will show you pictures because that's how God works of the highlights. And sadly, our whole life should be a reel, a reel of highlights. Not a highlight when I was class captain and a highlight when I made the netball team and a highlight when, when I got a promotion. No. Every day should be a highlight. A sense of achievement. A sense of accomplishments. It's accomplishment. A sense of progress. That's overflow to me. Not just looking at a bank balance and you unhappy. And every morning you wake up and say, Oh Lord, how can I get out of this day? And and especially I'll say it again, if you try your best and it's not working, maybe you're not graced for it. Mm. But there's something you are graced for, and something that will bring great glory to God. Something that right now you think is inferior, like this woman did. She said, I have nothing but a little jar of oil. And Elijah said, there's the key. Give me the little jar. We'll talk about that next week. Give me that little jar. Because before, you can, before God can multiply, increase anything, and before you can even pour out to God, you, you're pouring to God, but it's a wrong offering. It's a wrong sacrifice. Because you've never accepted who He designed you to be. 
Ultimately, we are just the product of His grace. Anything we do, it's God's grace. And when you look at the acrobat, and it's one of the most impressive things, where they tumble in the gymnastic arena, or the trapeze artists, how impressive does that look? But try it. You're going to break your neck. A lot of people with broken necks spiritually, emotionally, psychologically, because they're trying to be the trapeze artist. They're not designed to be it. So they're broken. You want to find a wholeness? You want to find shalom? You find it in who God created you to be. And you're not going to find it outside of Him. Because He's your designer. He's your maker. He's your creator. And with so many influences, it's one of the things that the people struggle with more than anything else, is to answer that question, who am I? What do I have? So they, they, they listen to all these voices. That's why you have to have time out in God's presence and have honest conversation and humble, humble. Not, I've gone this way now for three years and I've confessed and I've named it and I've claimed it and it's not working. People get into the naming, claiming business because faith is not naming it and claiming it and framing it, by the way. They do that because what they do is not working. Hello? Confession is not saying the same thing over and over as if God is dead or deaf. When you confess, it's to keep yourself in faith and in the process of God. But uh, confession is not going to change God's mind. You can get up every day and say, I'm anointed, I'm appointed, I'm anointed to preach. God says, no, you're not, you're an accountant. Well, I'm anointed to preach. God says, no, you're an accountant. He says, I'm anointed, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because anointed me to preach. Hey, you're anointed to witness. Everybody's anointed to witness. But this is your design. And I'm not blessing you outside of your design. I'm not blessing you out of your design. Because I'm God, you are not. I'm the potter, you are the clay. You will succeed where I created you to be. You will be blessed where I designed you. You will excel in life where I positioned you. Nowhere else. Nowhere else. So find yourself in God. Because some of you are lost. And don't ask your wife. Most of you don't have wives, which is a good thing right now. Um, I mean the young people. Amen. My life is not near. Don't ask your friend. Phone a friend. Who are you? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving tonight. You're sitting in this place, I'll tell you Jesus loves you. He really loves you. He does. He knows you intimately. Bible says he's acquainted with all your ways. And one thing about this amazing God, His love to you is bountiful. There's no end to God's love. And tonight it's a conversation that God's having with you to tell you you're not insignificant. You're not a loser. You're not a nobody. You're somebody very special. But you have to let the pressure go and find yourself in Him. Outside of him, we get lost. Trying to be, we get lost. Competing, we lose ourselves. What is it that you have? And the only place you're going to find that is in finding your maker. We lose it when we walk away from a close relationship with God. And then we go through formulas, performance, we try to get God's blessing because we're really not in that place. I want you to come back to Him tonight. To humble yourself. And give yourself back to Jesus. And for some of you, it's not going to be the easiest thing to do. But you want God's overflow. You're sitting here tonight. You're 30 years old, 25 years old. Listen, there's 60 years ahead of you. 60 years. You make the right decisions now. You'll have 60 years. 50 years of God's overflow. And there's no substitute for peace, for joy, for feeling. I am.
exactly where God created me to be. You're sitting here tonight, you say, Pastor, I've wandered away from God. Sitting there in Bloemfontein, Johannesburg, Pots of Struem, Kimberley, Cape Town, wherever you are tonight, Durban, Vintu, Khabarone, all the beautiful people, all these young people that are in church tonight. I'll tell you, God's got amazing plans for you. But this is not going to unfold if you do not connect with the one who created you. Maybe somebody brought you to church tonight. The reason you came is for God to get your attention. God has a future for you. God wants to take you into the life that He has for you. But it starts with a heart of surrender to put your life in His hands. While every head is bowed, people praying tonight, they're in Bloemfontein, in Pretoria, in Johannesburg, in all these churches tonight. You say, you're talking to me. <laughs> I've, I've lost myself. I've drifted away from God. I, I want to come back to Jesus tonight. I want to come home tonight. I want to reconnect with God. I've just been afloat in this life, and tonight you've spoken to me. I need to find myself again, and I want to find myself in God. If that's your desire, while every head is bowed, quickly, quietly, wherever you are, just slip up your hand. I want to say a prayer for you. Come on, all over this place, raise it up. Thank you. God bless you, bless you, bless you. Raise it up. God bless you. God bless you. Raise it up. Thank you up there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless. Come back to your creator, your maker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, all those beautiful young people. All the beautiful young people. All the beautiful young people. There's so much confusion and chaos in this world. Don't live in this chaos and confusion. God loves you, man. God loves you. If Jesus was here in person tonight, he would put his arms around you and love you and, and make you feel worthy and restore your dignity. The lie of the devil is that you're unworthy and that you don't deserve God's love and acceptance. That's a lie. You accept God's love and you accept who God created you to be. And you stop being hard on yourself. And I'll say it, don't allow pride to stop you from melting. Before I pray, you've not yet raised your hand. There's a stirring in your heart tonight. God's talking to you. The presence of God's all over this place. Lift your hand. Say yes. Pray for me. Pray for me. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you up there. Amen. Amen. Please, will you stand with me in all our churches tonight? Stand with me. Come on, everybody, stand. Let's stand together. God's going to change many lives here tonight. He's busy changing many of your lives while you stand there. Don't have a conversation 13 years from now. God's talking to some of you tonight. I know it. Because if you look at my message and what I'm preaching are two totally different things. He's talking to some of you. You have to listen. You have to melt. Melt. Because the Father knows best. Many of you raised your hands. Many of you brought your friends. There's nothing like running into the arms of Jesus. So tonight, there's no judgment, no guilt, no shame. There's a Father with open arms waiting for you to restore you. So if you've raised your hand, you did not. You want to accept God's love. Come back to Christ tonight. I want you to take your Bible, your personal belongings, whatever you brought to church. Leave your seat wherever you are. I'm going to pray with you right here at the altar. You come tonight. Come on. Put your arm around your friend. Walk them to the altar tonight. Don't think about it. Follow the stirring of God in your heart tonight. You come tonight. Come on, beautiful person. You come tonight. You run to the Father tonight. You find God's love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness. You find the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ tonight. This is your place of recovery. This is where you will find yourself. In the presence of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Everything this life has taken away from you. Allow God to bring it back to you tonight. Don't think about it. Receive a beautiful exchange tonight. God's grace. God's mercy. God's love. God's forgiveness. You come and receive all that God has for you. Come on there in Cape Town. Come on there in Potsdam, through and Bloemfontein. Walk to the altar tonight and receive all that God has for you. He loves you. Come on, Jesus, you can have it all. That's our prayer. We present ourselves to Him. This is not some religious activity. This is living dependent upon Him. Hallelujah. Jesus, 
Jesus, you can have it all. Come on, young person. Come on. Come on. You're not defined by the world. You're not defined by your sin. You're not defined by the stench of yesterday. You're defined by God's love. Receive His love, His mercy, His grace tonight. You come. You come. 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 Last time, let's sing it. Jesus, you can. Come on, let's celebrate our God. You still want to get down here, run quickly. Get down here quickly. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. We need a discovery for a recovery. Amen, amen, amen. You know... Well, people are coming, listen to me. Um, the devil specializes in making people feel not good about themselves. Religion specializes in making people feel not good about themselves. I suggest you don't hang out with anybody that doesn't make you feel good about yourself. I'm not talking about flattery. If people don't bring out the best in you, You know, I've got some of those people that always just want to put you in your place. Why do you even hang out with them? Why? If people always tell you what's wrong with you, what the heck? <laughs> you know, I grew up in a little church, and my pastor always told me, oh, I'm not. I'm serious. I love him. I honor him. He's in heaven. I got saved through him. But from the day I got saved, he always told me who I'm not. And it's like, okay. And he, I pray, you know me passionate. I pray, Jesus, thank you. He said, no, we don't pray like that in this church. Tone it down. And then I go like, okay. See if Father, see if any other. It's like. So they actually took me out of the prayer meeting. True story. Not criticism because I disrupted the prayer meeting. Because all you heard in the prayer meeting were, were pages like. And everybody was praying like. And I'm young, and I'm in there, and I'm like, then I start soft like everybody else, like, He says, no, 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 no. You do, you do disrupt. And he, then he always heard, you're not an evangelist. And I was like, okay, what am I? You're not a pastor. I said, okay, what am I? But I didn't allow that to get to me. Because the Lord showed me a spring like this and he said I'm using him even if he didn't know it maybe he did to get certain things out of me so it was a it was a period for me that I had to go through of pride out of my life arrogance the me the I so I had to go through that most people don't have to go through that because they've gone through that already in life they've gone through it there's, there, there's not a scripture in this Bible where God tells you what you're not. Find it. There's not a conversation God has in this Bible where he talks to somebody and talks about somebody else's purpose, except Ananias when God sends him to go lay hands on the Apostle Paul. Everybody else is God, wrestles with Jacob, he says, what's your name? He says, I'm Jacob, I'm a deceiver, I'm a supplanter. God says, I didn't call you to be Jacob, I called you to be Israel. You need your encounter with God. 
because he lived up to his name, supplanting, cheating, deceiving people all his life, till he encountered God for real. So we can't get beyond this. This is point one to overflow. Point one, who are you? Gideon, go in the smite. God says go. Never going to get anywhere until we get into who we created to be. Moses, 40 years backslidden in the backside of the wilderness. Blah, 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 blah. He makes five or four excuses and God gets angry with him. He says, now you go. You deliver my people. That's what I called you for. That's what I designed you for. Stop your excuses. So overflow is finding yourself in him. Not in a girl, not in a boy, not in the world, not in materialism. Yuck, where did this ever come from? This materialistic gospel. Where does it come from? It's not even the Bible. Money will follow people who serve God. Blessing follows people who serve God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. He doesn't promise you a poor life, but He says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. You don't look for the blessing. You don't work for the world. You follow God, and the blessing will follow you. You don't manipulate God using principles. You obey Him. And when you obey God, and you glorify God, and you honor God, God will bless what you touch. I'll tell you, that cup of coffee is going to be blessed. That one idea, that significant thing is going to be blessed. You find the thing that God has for you, it's going to be blessed. That one idea is going to be blessed. And you will experience the, the, the blessing and the increase of God in your life. But we never follow the money. Say amen. Because that nonsense must get out of churches. You honor God with your tithe. You honor God with your talent. You honor God with your treasure. And God will bless you. But you don't use the principles of God to manipulate God because you can't manipulate Him. You do this, God will do that. Almost I said the wrong word. Nonsense. You obey Him in who He created you to be. Isaac, you dwell in the land, then God blesses you. You follow me, God blesses you. The blessing follows you. The blessing follows you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God, God's rule in your life. God's final authority. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things. Because he's talking about people's financial needs will be added to you. My God shall supply. You don't look for the needs to be met. You look for God. And you are patient in the process. Say amen tonight, man. Please say amen. Because I'm preaching to the converted here tonight. Amen. You know why people make money the, the issue if money is the least in God's eyes? Money is a thing. Money is a neutral thing. Money follows. Money leaves. You serve God and, and, and you follow God's plan for your life. The blessing of God will follow you because where God guides, God provides. And uh, that brings you then to your tithe and offering. You honor God. If you get 10 rand, you honor God because you're an honorable person. You're not a manipulator. Your life is a life of honor because you understand God created you, God designed you, and all you have come from God. So it's no issue for you to give back to God because honoring God means you're putting God first. It's not a financial manipulative system. It's a system of honor. Like David who said, how can I give you anything? Because everything I have comes from you. So until there's not that recognition of who you are, and everything you have comes from God, the rest of the journey is not possible. It's going to be drips and dabs, ups and downs. It's not a life of overflow. Are you getting me? Amen. And, and wherever you are may seem insignificant to you, but it's not. Don't ever despise the day of small beginnings. Don't ever devalue the place where you are right now. Because where you are now is key to where you will be tomorrow. If you celebrate yourself while you are in the prison, while you are in Potiphar's house, 
if you will celebrate yourself, then in God's timing, He'll get you to the palace. But you can't confess the palace, the palace, the palace, if the journey is first the prison. Amen. Beautiful people, God's got great plans for your life. Do you believe that? All of you. What a beautiful post that one of our children's church teachers, the head of Bloomberg, put up this morning, uh, Sulian, um, I took a picture of seven young men that walked. They missed the bus. I just want to correct that. It's not like we don't have transport in Bloemfontein. Like some of the people commented and said, there's not transport ever. No, they missed the bus. Let me just say that quickly. But after they missed the bus, they decided they're going to walk to church. And she put up those 10 boys when they got to church. They walked 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers from Bloemfontein in the township, 10 kilometers. And when they got to church, they were in a huddle and she caught a picture of them. That's the generation that's going to change the world, man. I missed the bus, but I'm still going to get myself in church, even if I'm late. And she put a great post there. And she said, um, some people cannot even drive 10 kilometers to church. These kids walked. Hey, now. I dated a girl and I walked seven kilometers. Seven kilometers. I was 14 and stupid, right? I walked 14 kilometers to date her. And then 14, uh, uh, seven kilometers that way. And then seven kilometers back. So when I got saved, I thought, I serve the world like that. How can I not do much better for God? Right? You, 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 you walk after somebody else, but you can't walk after God. So props to those young men. I hope they get this message. You're going to do great things for God. Your hunger for God, your pursuit for God will cause great things to happen in your life. The sky is the limit. And you have found the source of your future. His name is Jesus Christ. Okay? Your environment does not determine your future. Your hunger for God, your pursuit of God will change you. You will discover yourself. And some of you are going to be doctors, lawyers, engineers, whatever. God has for your mind. God's going to take you out of the uh, township. Um, and they'll all live in a squatter camp, by the way. And because of your hunger, I'll tell you, I've watched God take people out of a squatter camp. And today they're doctors in the church, the advocates in the church, because they understood God is my life. So we never underestimate young people like this, children standing at the altar, um, what God's busy with them. So an act of kindness to a child's never forgiven or uh, forgotten. How sad. Sorry, I'm now sounding like a whatever. Uh, the kids that are dying in Gaza, the people that died in Israel, it's sad, right? We pray for all those people. We pray for the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people that are without food, without water, and we pray for them. We pray that God will make a way. We pray that God protect all the innocent. Innocent people don't deserve to suffer. I don't care who caused what. Those vicious people, may God expose them uh, uh, and their whereabouts, etc., that caused this. But um, all the people cannot suffer like this. God loves all people, and, and Christians need to change their theology. God loves all people. It's not okay for, for, for some people just to be uh, murdered or killed. It's just not okay. It's not okay. And, and we need to learn this in South Africa as well. It's like sometimes an injustice of yesterday uh, 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 justifies an action of today. No. Evil is evil. Wrong is wrong. You can't go kill somebody because you don't have a job. And the minister says it's because of unemployment that crime is this high. No. Uh, unemployment does not give you the right to go rob somebody, to rape a woman, to kill somebody. That's a moral problem. It's not, a, 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 it's not an economic problem, okay? So I don't know how we come out with all this nonsense, this rhetoric in the political arena. Yes, we need jobs. But our president should pay attention here. You've now commented on the Middle East, and I say it respectfully, now solve our problems in South Africa. This government deal with our problems. Get rid of the crime in this country. Yeah, I'll say amen, man, I'll say it. Make our country safe. Get investment in this country. This is our promised land. You are the servants of the people of South Africa. So it's easy to talk about somebody else. Let's get our house in order. Amen. My word... Amen. I love seeing these young people. Yeah. 
all the 40 years. Put your hand on your heart tonight. I'm, I take a moment because I love this. This is how I got saved. I'm never get, I've never gotten used to this. Nothing like connecting with the presence of Jesus. Everybody pray this prayer with me tonight. Say, Lord Jesus, I give myself back to you. Thank you for loving me just as I am. I believe that you rose from the grave. You paid the price for all my sin. Therefore, I know you love me with an everlasting love. And you only have kind intentions toward me. So I put my life in your hands and I trust you with my future. Thank you that you will lead me and guide me into all that you have for me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. Come on, you walk with God, walk with Him, walk with Him, amen. Walk with Him, walk with Him. Allow God to love you, restore you, work in you, and the rest will be history. His story in your life. A new beginning for many of you tonight. Amen. We love you. God loves you. And that which you're experiencing tonight is God's love. Amen. Listen, I got saved and my two friends were sitting there and we were running together doing bad things. I don't want to say what I did, but we did. And uh, God saved me and never saved them. Well, they didn't want to get saved and I made a decision. So, all the stuff we used to do as men, young guys, drugs, violence, whatever it is, tonight you walk away from it. You bury it. You could tell the girl, and you live a life for God. And next Sunday you come back. Come on. Huh? Come on. Yeah. I see people like you, I see myself. I was totally messed up, running with a gang, doing a lot of bad stuff, burned a lot of stuff, did a lot of crazy stuff. So when I see young people angry, I see myself. But I know what Jesus did for me, right? He's going to do the same for all of you. He's the answer. He is the answer. Not your, your, your might, not fighting people. You have to let that anger go and accept what God has for you. Some of you standing here, you've got exceptional leadership upon you. Don't let the devil steal it from you. No more. You're a leader among your friends. God's going to use you in his kingdom. You report to a pastor and let's disciple you. Turn to my right, your left, please, in Jesus' name. Go give them a hand clap, all of them. Come on, all the other churches, follow the pastors wherever you are. Come on, let's give them a big, big, big hand clap. A lot of young men here tonight, strong men, leaders. Leaders. I can see many leaders. Leaders. Now you're going to be a leader of the pack and you're going to turn that pack back to God. Leaders. Leaders. Come on. Come on, my brothers. My young brothers. Come on. You are going to make this country what it should be. You are our now. Amen. Okay, do this. Put your hand on your heart. Do it. Do it. That's your heart. Your, your heart's got a mind as well. You know that feelings. Say, thank you, Father, for making me exactly who I am meant to be. I am the right person at the right time, and I accept who you created me to be. Help me to find my design in you. And to live a life pleasing unto you. I give myself to you. And I make up my mind to have that conversation that you want with me. So that I can experience all that you have for me. I lay down the yoke of pressure, people's opinions, anxiety, fear, uncertainty and self-doubt and I clothe myself with Christ with the mind of Christ and with the favor of God I thank you father 
that I am loved by you. And therefore, I love myself exactly the way you created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Yes, celebrate who God created you to be. Hallelujah. Hey, God loves you. I love you. God's got great plans for your life. Take your seat. Watch the screen quickly for the offering. You'll be home in time for the rugby. Not that it matters. Jesus said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Meaning that we will center our lives around what we value most. God wants all of you. He deserves our best and our all because God gave us his best, his son, Jesus Christ, to rescue us from eternal damnation. Therefore, giving our time, talent, and treasure to our King should be our number one priority and privilege. Every person in this vision fulfills a vital role in the advancement of the kingdom, and we are grateful for each one's understanding of what it means to honor God with what we have been given. It was heartwarming to see hundreds of volunteers avail themselves to serve in this house of God, serving with passion and energy to ensure every aspect of our Dream Week conference was executed in excellence. We saw young and old investing their time and talent to various platforms where they diligently and enthusiastically contributed towards the engagement between the family of Christ, bringing people together to experience the love and compassion of God. As stewards, we should spend our time, talent, and treasure wisely, investing in our eternal destinies as we honor God with our first fruits. In Luke chapter 12, verse 48, we read, Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required, and from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand more. We all would like to hear the words, Well done, good and faithful steward. Therefore, let us continue to be generous with our time, talents, as well as our treasure to demonstrate our grateful hearts towards God. We thank every faithful giver for faithfully building God's house through your generous financial contributions. We advance God's kingdom and stand together as a tribe against the kingdom of darkness. We are an unstoppable force that confidently and boldly fights for every lost soul to see multitudes more entering God's kingdom in the year of overflow. God bless. Please remain seated as we close the doors for your safety.
soul be still. Hold my soul be lifted. He loves you. He loves you. Oh, hold my soul be still. And hold my soul be lifted. He loves you. Oh, how he Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the opportunity that we could gather together as sons and daughters of the Most High. Thank you, Father, for the word. Thank you that it was preached and fell into good ground tonight, Father. Help us to take it into our world this week. Thank you, Father, that as your hands and your feet, that we will go and heal, touch, deliver, set free people out there who's got, who are broken and dying, Father. Thank you. For the privilege and the honor of being in an amazing church like this. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to give into the offering, to build your kingdom, to make a difference in Jesus' mighty name. And we pray for the French that, uh, because they're going to need it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a fantastic week. Hallelujah. Love